YouTube, what is up? It's your boy APFC. We signed a centre back. I have no idea how many times I would have said that over the last 10 years, probably three or four, considering we don't have a habit of signing centre backs. But we do have one. Pablo Murray has just been, I've just woken up, it is 7.09 a.m. Australian time. We have just confirmed Pablo Murray. I've just seen the news. It's a four million loan with an option to make it permanent in the next window. Obviously, this looks like a deal that was off, uh, simply because the Flamengo president came out and said that we changed uh, parts of the deal. Uh, he flew back to Brazil, didn't look like this one was happening. Then there was all these talk about Matt Vienko coming in. Um, but we do have our man, and it looks like we have been chasing him for a couple of weeks. He has just had his first interview as an Arsenal player, so I'm going to go through the interview and go through what he can offer Arsenal moving forward. I have done a video on Pablo Mari uh, maybe three or four videos ago, so go check that out. Uh, I did a video analysing what he can bring to the club, but I will go through some of this again in this video. So, basically, to start, I was on the Arsenal website and I did notice that Edu has spoken about the transfer and he has said, Pablo is an experienced player who will provide us with additional defensive quality. We have been monitoring his career for a while and we are pleased to have reached an agreement with Flamengo for him to join us initially until the end of the season. From what it's sounding like, I still think this is a short-term solution. I'm not 100% convinced that they see Pablo Mari as the future centre-back for Arsenal moving forward, uh, which has some raised some doubts for me. I always think we should be looking for the long-term, and if he's not good enough for the long-term, why are we signing him for the short-term? Um, but obviously, the last two years of his career has been his best. He obviously has won the Copa Libertadores, he has won the Brazilian League, he made the final of the Club World Cup where he was an outstanding player in that final against Liverpool of all teams. Um, so, I mean, this is a massive opportunity for him and I'm sure when a deal looked like it was off, he was disappointed. Apparently he was quite disappointed, um, but good for him, he has got that move. So. I'm going to go through, first of all, the, the interview. I'm not going to go through the whole thing. I'm just going to go through parts that I've picked out. Um, so, basically, uh, the, the interviewer asked Pablo Mari, essentially, of sort of how this all came about. And he said, the conversation started a couple of weeks ago. Arsenal told us they were interested. We won everything with Flamengo. I won the league, Copa Libertadores, and was also named the best centre-back in the Americas. So that would have helped Arsenal notice me. As I've said, I'm really happy. It's a great achievement for me to come to Arsenal and it all happened in basically two weeks. So I wonder if he was the first choice centre back because I remember Arteta saying when he came in that obviously he has had discussions about transfer signings in January. I'm not sure whether this was initially a plan before. It doesn't sound like it was. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. It, it sounds like Maybe we were looking at him, but he wasn't our first choice centre-back, but it looks like we've only sort of come in for them in the last two weeks. I actually think that the injury to Callum Chambers forced Arsenal's hand. I'm not entirely convinced they were looking to bring in a centre-back this window, actually. Um, but obviously Chambers getting injured, and then obviously the Mustafi one has probably sped Arsenal up to make this transfer happen. I am also wondering if the deal was off, but then Mustafi got that sprained ankle injury, and it sort of pushed Arsenal to, to come in with a new and improved offer. Uh, but whatever the situation is, he's now here. What I do like about Pablo Mari, and I'll go through this more in the interview, is that he seems to have quite a lot of confidence in his ability and he believes that he is playing now at the right level. I will continue. Um, so uh, the interviewer asked, what can Arsenal fans expect from you in terms of a professional and a playing style? And he said, I'm a professional player. I like working hard every day to achieve objectives. One thing I can control is working hard on a daily basis to help my teammates win football matches and repay the faith Mikel and Arsenal have shown by signing me to play here. So that's the main objective. Uh, he is then asked about what, his ex what are your expectations in terms of playing in the Premier League and how much of a step up do you think? Quite a good question, by the way. He says, right now, I want to focus on the day-to-day -day side of things. I think we need to put plans to one side for now because the most important thing is to take things one day at a time and focus on achieving short-term goals. 
We need to change the dynamic around the team so the short-term objectives are most important. I quite like that answer, particularly the part where he says we need to change the dynamic around the team. So Pablo Mari is clearly, clearly aware that things have not been rosy for us this season and he believes that it needs to have some sort of improvement because let's be real, for a club of our size, we are massively underachieving. I'm glad he's aware of that and I'm glad he is aware that it is a fight on our hands to get ourselves to be back to the level we belong. I am wondering as well, was this a Mikel Arteta signing? Did Mikel Arteta know about a lot about Pablo Mari before he signed him? Obviously, he was on City's books for a few years, so I wonder if he had some something to do with him. I assume Pablo Mari would have had a, at least a few training sessions under Arteta in between moves that he's had to different clubs. Um, but for me, I think this is an Edu signing. Obviously, we saw Gabriel Martinelli come in in the last window, which was pretty much Edu pushing this one through. This, for me, sounds like another signing by Edu. And, you know, we have been known for being penny-pinching Arsenal, so what better sort of man to come in like Edu and know the Brazilian market, a cheaper market in the scheme of things, and to be able to pick up these sort of players. So, yeah. You know, I think Mikel probably would have known a lot about him, but simply because he's never really been a City player and he never played for City, I don't think he would have particularly known enough about him to want to actually bring him into the club. Uh, the next question. So he was asked about his game against Liverpool in the Club World Cup. So the interviewer asked, you recently played against Liverpool in the Club World Cup final and received a lot of praise for the way you handled Mane and Mo Salah. What was that experience like for you? He says, it was a great experience. It was really exciting to play against a big club and I think I performed really well. Like that part, he, he seems like a very confident player, uh, very confident in his ability. At the end of the day, they are just people like everyone else, very much like that part. Obviously, they're in great form at the moment and they're among the best players in the world, but we also have a fantastic team with top players. This is football and that's the way you have to look at it. You have to come up, compete, sorry, against every side, uh, whether it's Liverpool or any other club, I have a lot of faith in this great club. I know we are going to do very well. Where is that part that I liked? At the end of the day, they are just people like everyone else. That is exactly what I want to hear because sometimes against these bigger clubs, we look up to them and we're like, oh, it's Liverpool, oh, it's Man City, and we panic the fuck out of games. I like that attitude. Obviously, all these players talk a good game in the press conference and the way that the video is put together allows the player to, to, to speak uh, and communicate better than he actually does. But this particular part, I am very impressed with because too many times our players are overawed by uh, big occasions, particularly in games where our back's against the wall, although I have noticing that that is improving under Arteta. So, Although I don't know a lot about his mentality, this interview is giving me some sort of indication of what to expect from him mentally. And I do like the fact that he, he's not really overthinking it. He's like, look, they're just people. They're like everybody else. And that is exactly right. Because, you know, in these games where we've got absolutely whacked in the past, like 6-0 against Chelsea, 5-1 against Liverpool, 8-2 against United, 3-1 against City, all these sort of games, we have looked completely overwrought and we seem to be looking up to these players and not actually believing we're at that level and Pablo Murray for me whether he actually believes it or not that we're at we are close to that level I like his sort of self-confidence and I really like uh, how he's very confident in his ability so where does he fit in so Louise has been playing as the left sided center back Xhaka seems to drop in and Louise is that sort of player uh, that is, you know, playing that uh, sort of playmaker role in some respects with, with feeding the ball. Because Pablo Mari is left-footed, I think it will allow Luis to go on the right-hand side and Pablo Mari will be on the left. Both of them are very good ball-playing centre-backs. And I think personally that will make us a lot stronger on the right-hand side because what I have noticed under Arteta is that we are very dominant down the left. Even when players like Kolasinac are not playing, even when Saka has playing, we've been very, very dominant down the left. And I've noticed that the right-hand side, which include, has included Bellerin uh, and Nicolas Pepe, I don't think Pepe gets enough of the ball during games. And I am hoping that because we now have two centre-backs that are very comfortable playing the ball and are very comfortable playing the long ball as well, I hope that sort of balances out the team a lot more. 
and it will allow Pepe, particularly him who has probably been our most underperforming player since Mikel Arteta has come in, um, particularly him, he can now get a lot more of the ball because sometimes for 20 to 30 minute, minute periods during, uh, during games, the right hand side tends to be void and we don't really seem to want to threaten that right hand side. So I will compare as well uh, Pablo Mari in comparison to Matt Vienka and Boateng because we were linked with those two players. Mari has won 69.5% of battles on the floor in the last 12 months. I did mention that in my previous video about him. He has no problem in those sort of one-on-one -on -one duels. However, he does seem to struggle when a player of very quick pace is running at him. And there will be a lot of them in the Premier League, so we need to sort of wait and see how he can handle those much quicker players. Um, but because he keeps himself upright and he doesn't really dive into tackles, I think that it's a strength of his. And I think that it will suit him in the Premier League and particularly with the centre-backs that we've had in the past, they tend not to stay on their feet and they tend to go to ground too easily. And I think Mari is not that sort of player. So for me, when a, when a defender doesn't go to ground, it sort of shows composure and a more of a calming insurance. I've noticed that with David Luiz, he doesn't go to ground as much now and he's more of a calming influence at the back. If we have two of them, that are not only calming, but stay on their feet, but can also very comfortable play the ball on both hand sides, with Mari being comfortable on the left hand side because he's left footed, and David Luiz on the right because he's right footed, it will bring a lot more balance to the team. And right now, or at least when Arteta came in, it was a very imbalanced squad. So although some people will consider this to be quite a risky signing in terms of not having a lot of experience, at least that's what it seems like it's gonna offer us more balance coming into the end of the season. Uh, another stat, so Mari has faced more aerial battles per 90 than Matt Vienko and uh, Boateng. He's won 61%, which is more than Matt Vienko, but less than Boateng, which doesn't really say a lot for me in the schemes of, I don't think Boateng was ever going to be suitable for Arsenal. I have done a video on that uh, previously as well. Um, and more than Matt Vienko, which isn't overly surprising because Matt Vienko is a lot shorter than Pablo Mari. From what I can see here, Pablo Mari is 193 centimetres, which I think is 6'4". So, you know, he's got a lot of height and I think Arsenal have really lacked those sort of taller centre-backs. David Luiz is, is tall, but he's not really the most physical build. Mustafi's not really tall and not very a physical build. We haven't really signed many centre-backs over the years that have that sort of presence. Even someone like Thomas Vermaelen and Lauren Koscielny, although not exactly short, they weren't exactly massively built either. I'm not saying Pablo Mari is massive, but at the same time, he's got a much of a stronger build in the scheme of things compared to other players. So I, I think that particularly in the Premier League and particularly in games where we're holding on to a lead. Bournemouth one comes to mind where they are whipping and crosses. Pablo Mari will have no issues in that respect of the game. Uh, I have another one. So Matt Vienko, however, has more interceptions and makes fewer fouls uh, than Mari. And yes, I have watched Matt Vienko highlights, although I don't, do not watch the Ukrainian League. I don't not watch many Shakhtar games. And I have noticed he makes quite a few interceptions. However, those sort of players, those, those, those defenders that are more comfortable in interceptions, we've signed a lot of them in the past. Thomas Vermaelen was one. Koscielny had that ability when he came in to be that sort of player. I think it's better that we're taking this direction of a more physical presence that doesn't really try to make too many uh, interceptions but sort of holds his position a little bit more. I think that is a much better way of moving forward. We sort of need more composure in those areas and the last thing we need is defenders looking to make that miracle interception. Although I have noticed with Pablo Mari is that he does... He does go up for tackles a lot in, in areas that may, um, maybe are not considered to be the centre-back area. What I mean by that is that he can push up high on midfielders, which for me is a good and a bad thing if he has the, the pace to be able to get back. And it's the right time to do it, and he is aware that that is the right time to make that press. Sure, no worries. I understand that centre-backs have to do that at times, particularly when midfielders are out of position. Um, but he needs to be aware that the Premier League is a completely different league and he will not probably be able to get away with making those sort of risky, not interceptions, but those risky presses when we, and you know, if we do press and then the balls play quickly when they have a centre back out of position. So as long as Pablo Mari has that mentality and that ability to be able to know when it's the right time, 
I think he'll have no problem being able to settle in with us as well. So, yeah, so the thing is, is that I guess a lot of people are saying is that our loan record is atrocious, and I agree, and our centre-back signings have not been very good over the years, uh, Mustafi obviously being one. Gabriel Pulista was another one that I keep thinking about with this because I'm pretty sure he came from the Brazilian league, and although he started well with us, he looks a little bit out of his depth, and generally speaking, a lot of Arsenal fans will agree with me that he did look out of his depth when he was at Arsenal about 90% of the time. Didn't really work out for us, so here's hoping. I mean, Mari is probably coming from a better period in his career than Gabriel came in. He's obviously just won two trophies. He's got that, at the moment, that confidence and winning mentality. He's just put in a very good performance against Liverpool, the best team in the world at the Club World Cup at a very high occasion. So... I think it will probably work out better than Gabriel Polista, but for me, this signing still has that risk element, particularly because he doesn't have any experience. If you're comparing him with Matt Vienko, Matt Vienko has more international experience because Mari has never played for Spain. He's Spanish at any level, and Matt Vienko has played more games in Europe. Matt Vienko has not played any games in Europe in terms of Champions League and Europa League, whereas... Um, no, I meant Mari. Mari has not, but Matt Vienko has. So, yeah, so uh, for me, I still get that risk sort of element about him. However, what I have noticed about Pablo Mari as well um, is that, you know, as I said in previous videos, he's got that good anticipation for tackles. He's not slow for his size, although he's 194 centimetres. He's not exactly slow, but he's not too quick either. And he's strong in the air and comfortable with the ball. And all those things for me, point to yes this could be the right signing and this could particularly complement David Luiz because Arteta seems to really want to get these center backs involved from bringing the play up this is a this is a tactic that City used often um, you know that I've used often over the last few years and Arteta has clearly picked up that sort of mentality and 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 style of play from Guardiola or ultimately from when he was there himself so uh, I'm not unhappy but I'm not but uh, I'm not um, I'm not exactly happy either. I think this is a massive, we'll wait and see. Let's be real, none of us really know anything about him. No one knew who he was 10 days ago, unless you're an avid watcher of the Brazilian league and you've seen Flamengo play a few times. No one really knows who Pablo Mari is. So only time will tell. At least for now, he's decent cover for Callum Chambers being injured. I think he's probably better than Callum Chambers, but we need to look long-term with these signings as well. And I am really hoping that when we made this signing, we do genuinely believe that he's going to be good enough long-term. The fact that we didn't sign him straight away uh, could be for either of the following reasons. Is that number one, we don't have the funds to make permanent signings, which that is looking quite likely right now. Um, and number two, which I don't know why we don't have the funds, by the way, or number two, we, we're, we're sure enough for him to come in for now, but we're not sure enough for him to be long-term. And I think with Salah becoming in next year, we do need a solid centre-back pairing. And Mario is 26. He's got some of his best years ahead of him. So let's hope that he is considered to be a future pass of the piece of the jigsaw puzzle under Arteta. But that's pretty much our video for today, guys. Just, so just to summarise, Pablo Mari has just signed for Arsenal. We have signed a centre-back. Onwards and upwards, let's hope there's some more signings coming in. Thank you for watching, guys. Have a fantastic day.